Hello everyone, welcome to Five Pints In, the show where, as you know by now, we are always five pints in. We had a half time in our Paul Dickov interview. We've come in for some well earned beers. I do want to let you know that we've secured next week's guest, all you Man City West Ham fans, and he's told me to mention Northampton, Non Eaten Butter, I think Reading was another one, and he proudly boasts England non league. We used to joke about it quite a bit back in the day. Anyway, Trevor Morley is going to be on the show and I'm sure there'll be some interesting stories to be told. Obviously about yours truly. Um, Frankie Mack, Ian Brightwell, Julian, Johnny Monks. There's some shaved eyebrows, Mr Potato Head, even some horse training. Well, you'll have to wait till next week to get, to get the rest of all that and delve a little bit deeper. Anyway... Hope you've enjoyed the first part of the Dickey interview. We're about to go out for the second half. Somebody did tweet in that it's called five pints in. Why do you sound like you're ten pints in? And I said, well, what happens is we make the phone call. We start the interview five pints in. And then the thing with, with Dickey, we was on the phone for four hours. So if you think we were a little bit scalloped in the first half, you've got to listen to part two. Enjoy. Dickey died out. Listen, um... You ended up, which is something I, I I really didn't see myself doing. You went into management. Yeah, I know. No, How I did mean. that happen? How did that happen? And I'm going to throw it in straight away. Did you expect your players to be like you were when you played? Which was my biggest problem as a manager, mate. Um, your but, biggest fault or your biggest problem? Both. Both. Okay. Um, At least it was big, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least it was a problem, though. No. <laughs> Towards the end of my career, uh, I went to... When I left Blackburn, went back to City, and then I went out and loan. Um, Pierce signed me, Sven came in. I went out and loan to Palace, went out and loan to Blackpool, and then when I went... Palace at the time were in the Championship, Blackpool were struggling for relegation and Simon Grayson brought me up and he basically said to me that but I've never seen myself with this passion maybe it was a bit of you that rubbed off on me and he went look I want you to come in and he went we've got a lot of you young kids and they basically went can you look after them and then I found that sort of went well and then I re-signed back at Leicester and Nigel Pearson was the same he said look we've got a lot of players like Max Grado and Matty Fryett um, a, a lot of young kids but they were good players but he was like they want you to be how you are and look after them and the more that happened and then I went and loaned to I went and loaned to Leeds and it was Simon Grayson again <coughs> and, it, and it was my last season as a player and he, he basically said to me look he went there's Max Gradle again he said look at Jermaine Beckford Johnny House and he said and this was the January time he said we're going for promotion at the end of the season he went and he said, we will get promoted. He went, but they're really good. Eh? He went, can you come in and give them a kick up the backside? Robert Snodgrass was there. And you said, have you got uh, a step ladder? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and so, so basically I would just come in and not necessarily, especially at Leeds, I knew I wasn't going to play a lot. Um, I did an operation on my back. I, was, I, I knew I was coming to the end. And you've got to admit it. And oh, but, but while I was at Leeds, Simon Corney, who was the Oldham manager, the Oldham chairman, called me up. And he basically said to me, um, I'm thinking about changing manager at the end of the season. He went, would you come for an interview? And I went, well, <coughs> I went, yes and no. I said, it's something, I'd seen myself over the last year thinking that way about going into managing and coaching. Um, I said, but what, I, what I'm not going to do, I said, if you've got a manager in place at the minute, I said, I'm not going to come and speak to you. I said, because that's, it's, it's a shit trick. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not like that. And he went, no, I just said, just let's meet up for a coffee. And I, and I basically went silent. And when you've made the decision, I said, give me a call, and I'll be interested. But I'm not going to do that now. Anyway, he made the decision, called me up, and said, can you meet me? Went and met him, and he went, look, um, the job's yours if you want it. And at the time, I had an offer from Toronto. Um, who were in the MLS at the time? And, uh, Mo Johnson was the technical director. I think I think you called me then, mate. Yeah, yeah. I think right. you called and asked me about that. Yeah. Yeah, 
and um, went out to Toronto for a week. It was amazing. Um, but I just thought if I wanted to go into management for the sake of playing for another year um, in the MLS and then not knowing what I was going to do, but more importantly, if I wanted to go into management and I had an offer now, in a year's time, if I'm out of the country, that offer might never it be might there. might not again. be there, yeah. You know, and yeah. <laughs> Jan and the kids still remind me of it, now, of it now. You had the chance to go to Toronto, but we ended up going to fucking Oldham. Cheers. <laughs> 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 but um, but no, at Oldham, I loved it, mate. I loved it. It's it, it such a good group of players that weren't the best, but had the right attitude. Um, and it used to frustrate me at times because... If a manager asks me to do something, and, and Drew Bush as well, although you might not agree with what he's asking you to do, you would do it. Yeah. But at the at lower league level, sometimes they don't have the capacity to do that. And if you're working at Monday to Friday, and then on a Saturday, <laughs> it all goes out the window. But as the manager, you're there to be shot at. But the one thing I couldn't do, especially with the olden boys, was point fingers at them yeah. for not giving me everything that they got. So how did, how did that, what about, was that the season you played Liverpool in the Cup, mate? Yeah, well, I ended up drawing Liverpool both seasons. Oh, right, um, yeah. Yeah, the, yeah. The first season was at Anfield. Yeah. Um, and it's one of the proudest moments in my career, because um, Sir Kenneth Douglas was, was my hero growing up. Yeah. Um, a lot of people's heroes, mate, you know, even if yeah. they weren't Liverpool fans. And I'd met him a couple of times, and I've always just, just been in awe of him. Especially as a young guy in Scotland growing up, you know, he was, for me, one of the best players in the world. And just a complete icon for what he'd done. And, and to stand in the technical area at Anfield with my team and having Kerry Douglas standing next to me with his Liverpool team was just the most surreal thing, but one of the best things I've managed to do in my career. I actually think I stood for about 10 minutes and didn't watch the game and just stared at him. Drooling. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't want to shoot you down, mate. But when I had my pub in Southport, he came in there once. I know it's not the same. And, <laughs> and what? It, <laughs> but, but it's it's Kenny. And isn't what? It? It saw you and then it's turned King around. Kenny. Well, what happened was his, his son. I played with. Well, I trained with Paul when I got back from the, the states. Paul was at Wigan, and I, I used to go in and train uh, with Paul Jewell at, at Wigan for about five, six months. And then Paul phoned me, because Kenny only lived down the road from where me, our house and, and the pub was. So Paul phoned me up one night and went, is the pub empty or is there quite a few people in us? I said, why? He went, well, my dad's on his way home and he wants a couple of glasses of wine and he thought he'd come in the pub and, and see you. Like, He went, but he doesn't want to really be bothered. I went, well, for your dad, I can do things. So anyway, <laughs> I fabricated a story that the drains were broken, the pub was going to start stinking, so I had to kick all the locals out. I thought that you're fabricating a story, is it? <laughs> <laughs> one off. Especially while one I was off. in a pub. One while off. I was in a pub. <laughs> but it was my pub. He so was he was creative. I ended up saying to everyone, You gotta go home, uh, come back Monday, I think it was, and, and I'll buy us all a pint. So I phoned a couple of people and Kenny came in and we had a good a good drink and a and a good chat. Not not the same as standing next to him at Anfield, I must admit. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> it's funny. Why was, just there to... a little... Why was there a silence there? I, I, I don't uh, know, but... We thought you had more to your story and then it just ended. <laughs> no, that was as good as it got. Yeah, it just, that, just, that, that was I just, it, it just, that, that story reminded me of something and I'm sure um, Paul, your kids, Lauren, Max and Sam will, will agree with me, like, or I can touch on that level because you were saying that you chose Oldham and they were like, ah. Oh, you know, fuck, we're still here or whatever. I remember um, Ian, or, you know, I remember you signing for Miami, and it was like your options were Miami, Syracuse, or Sheffield. Was it Sheffield or Wednesday? Barnsley. Or was it Sheffield Barnsley? Wednesday or Barnsley? I thought Sheffield. Yeah. And Sheffield. I, I remember sitting on the couch in Southport thinking, fucking hell, like, I've either got to go to Miami, New York, or. Sheffield, which I didn't know where it was because I was eight years old. That's not how I remember it. I remember thinking, I remember just dreading, just just dreading leaving our play, our house in Southport. And I remember, I, I literally remember that moment thinking, 
this is the end of the world. What's I, going so, on? Yeah, yeah I, I remember thinking, like, where are we going? And no, Oldham is the end of the world, isn't it? Well, <laughs> see, I think, I think dad's, I think dad and mum spoke to you. Well, I remember, and then spoke I remember to us getting and was sent, like, I remember going getting, to America. yeah, but I remember getting sent Jordan pins. decided. I remember getting sent pins from Syracuse, and I was like, what the hell is Syracuse? Like, I have no idea what that is. And we got pins and stickers and, yeah. and whatever, but we ended up, um, so this is, you know, it's it's the other side of it, and I and I ha- sort of hated that, like we were going to Miami. I was like, oh fuck, like yeah, we got, we're again I, I didn't I didn't like football. that either. So that's sort of the other side of 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 what like Max and Sam and Lauren probably thought, like oh shit, we got to stay, you know, where we are. Or, or, yeah, or in, in, in fairness, Dave, especially the boys, especially Sam and Max, they just loved the fact that they were young at the time, so they didn't really realize yeah what was going How on. How old? The fact that I'd, the Sorry. fact that I'd become a manager, they they loved the fact that their dad was become the football manager after being a football player because they'd never really seen me play. It would be like you guys. Yeah, yeah. When I when I got the pub, you know. when I got the pub, yeah, yeah, and we were like, he's, so fin- he's finally a manager at, <laughs> yeah, of, a, yeah. of a pub. <laughs> no, we we actually talked. Uh, you you had license to that pool table. I used to kick everyone. Yeah, off. we used to claim so it. Honestly, play. don't even go there. No, honestly, no. When um, Paul, when uh, we talked about this, uh, I think the episode or episode before this um, about him in Miami, we honestly used to just sit in the stands waiting for him to get red carded, <laughs> so we can go down to the uh, dressing room to talk to him and laugh at him. Yeah, because... but it was a weird time though because, like, a lot of I mean, it, like I remember thinking, Jesus Christ, like Miami, Syracuse, or I, I, I just specifically remember Sheffield Wednesday for some reason. And I was like, yeah, that the... was Paul Jewell again. That was Paul Jewell I was like, as well. Yeah. I was like, where the fuck is Sheffield Wednesday? You know, as an eight-year-old or, or a nine-year-old or however old, I was like, where Man City are we fan. going? You know, yeah, as a Man City fan as well, I was like, where is he going? Well, actually, if it had been Sheffield or Barnsley, you wouldn't have gone anywhere. I know. I drove the hour now. I, yeah. I didn't know that, you know. Uh, like, I, I also didn't understand that we were in Southport when you were driving to, to Man City. It was like... I used to keep them in the dark, Dickie. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the best They'd go from the house to the pub, <laughs> yeah. to the house. I just it. remember is I, I just remember thinking it, it what's with the a pub, hood on. What are the pubs like around there? And Not then, me. I was like, all right, I know Chelsea don't fucking want him. So, <laughs> where's he? Where's he fucking going now? Uh, I wish you'd go back to last week when you was just praising me. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> that was a that was a, a that was a one off. Yeah. Damn so, mate, so Dickie, Dickie, the Oldham, um, what, what happened at the end? I, I remember you, I remember it, it you walking away mate. after after yeah, you it, beat Liverpool, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was, it was difficult because, I, as I said, the players were brilliant for me, but behind the scenes, it was it was a shambles. And it, it, Simon Corney, who was the chairman, he became a really good friend, which I think that was half the problem because we got, we got on so well. And, uh, right. he, he was struggling. The club was struggling financially. I mean, I wasn't getting paid. The players weren't getting paid. But we would only find out on payday. Right. It was always on the Friday, and then the players would be coming to me. And I, I always said to the players, "Look, I will be as honest with you as you can." And I would go to the board. Simon was based in New York, so he couldn't. It wasn't accessible all the time. So I go to the board and say, look, are the players getting paid this month? I said, because I'm going to have a meeting with them. Yes, the players are getting paid. I'll call all the players in and say, look, I told you all along, I've got your backs. They're getting paid this month. Payday would come, not getting paid. And right. there was times where we would travel to hotels. The hotel bills wouldn't be paid. I would have to cover it all myself. And the, and the players knew all this. Players would get sold under my feet without me even finding out about it. Dale Stevens, who's now at Brighton. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we had Dale, with Dean Furman. I mean, a lot of the guys that listen to us might not know who they are. Dean's now, or has been South African captain. We had a lot of, we had a lot of good <coughs> young players that would just get sold under my feet. And it got to the point where we played crew, had been there two, two and a bit years. We played crew, and we lost one now. And I got a... Usually straight after the game, all the board members would be around, and there was only one left who came in and went to me. Um, your staff's getting sacked tomorrow, and I was like, "What?" Um, and they went. I said, "I'm not having that." So I went hold and called a very respectable manager. I'm not allowed to name, and I said, "Look, 
they're, they're sacking my staff tomorrow. I'm going to I'm going to resign. And he went, "Don't you dare!" Right. And he was like, "Don't you dare resign." They're backing you into a corner. You've not been getting paid. Don't resign. So I'm like, okay then. Um, so I didn't. Sat down with Jerry Taggart, who I love to do <laughs> tags. Yeah. Um, absolutely. We'll get we'll get on to that trip guy. a little bit later. <laughs> yeah, legend and everything else, um, and explain to him what had happened. And then we drew Nottingham Forest in the third round. And Nottingham Forest were flying at the time. We went down there. It was probably one of my best. The Liverpool game is the highlight, but Nottingham Forest game. We ended up beating them 3-2, drew Liverpool in the next round, um, beat them with Brendan Rodgers, and it was like, it was ridiculous. We Boundary Park had players that were around 250, 300 quid a week. They had Suarez, Sterling, Jared came off the bench, Jamie Carragher, you name it. <coughs> yeah. Courage. I and remember it, mate, yeah. Yeah, and we ended up beating them. And the manager I was talking about before called me straight after the game and went and resigned now. Yeah, and I went. I went. You've been telling me for the last two months not to. About well, time and all, mate. Yeah. And he went. Your stock is never as high as what it's going to be now. He right. Went, so get out now. But me being a stubborn little git and being loyal to my players and to the club and to be fair, the old and me gave him my chance. I just I stayed on to the extra week. We went down to Walsall. Um, ended up losing the game. I sat with Dean Smith, who's now the Villa manager, and I seen Dean a couple of weeks ago, and he tells the story, and I went. I've had enough now, I'm going to resign. And we ended up sitting for about two hours in his office and he was like, don't resign, don't resign. And he actually talked me out of it. But then I drove back from Walsall and woke up on Sunday morning and I went, nah, that's it. And Dean Smith was like, he said, I just spoke to my wife about what a good thing I'd done about telling you not to resign and went on about it all night. And then again mm. the next morning, I turned on Sky Sports News and the old ticker came as a whole dick of resigns as my manager was old on. Um, but that was the right thing. That was the right thing to do, mate. Because um, for for both parties at the same time. And then do you know what? Simon probably he, he was thinking about sacking me anyway because the yeah. form wasn't great. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I can't put it all on the club and everything else because as much as the top runs were great, our league. But but do you think you had all the resources that you need to to succeed as a manager? Because you can't you can't pull rabbits out your arse, mate. You know what I mean? It's no, I actually felt, look, I would never have said it at the time I was in it, Bish, but I, I, I look back now with what I had budget-wise, I did. And, and for what the, the club pulled in and cut runs and player sales was, you know, you're know, you talking into high seven figures, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but it didn't come at your disposal, no? No, Any not of at it. all. Not at but, all. But that's the thing, but, but you being as, as proud as you are of yourself... You're not worried about that side of it. You still think you can succeed with what you have. It's a natural feeling for you, yeah. isn't it? To think, well, you know what, I'll yeah. just get on and do it. You're not going to get any credit for it, no, even, I, if I was, you, even if you even if you do pull I it was, off in the end. I was more and more enemy as well because people would say to me, "Look, Dickie, <clears throat> the, 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 the League One players, the League One players for a reason." And it took yeah. me so long for me to get it in my head because you know how stubborn I am and how how much I think I can change things and if you do the right thing and I genuinely believe that I could change them do you know you what I mean you make it work yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I had some honestly at Oldham and Doncaster some super talented players that that could have played in the same team we did and, do you know what I mean the Premier League or the Championship and, yeah and but the, the the mentality, trying to change their mentality, it used to kill me. Absolutely used to kill me, because I could see they were good lads. I could see their the ability, but just <clears throat> their outlook. And you know, going back to where we start the conversation, we, we enjoyed ourselves, but football was being you know, an end all for us, wasn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. As much as we'll laugh and joke about going to the pub and the nights out we had and the stories we've got. But trying to get th- through to them, and and I just came to the conclusion where they all wanted to be footballers, but didn't want to put the work in that made them be footballers at the same time as well. Do you know that? Yeah. I, I would I would see players on five hundred quid a week, thousand pound a week, fifteen hundred quid a week, turn up in the training ground in Range Rover Sports and mosh bags and headphones, and I'm thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> I yeah. know exactly what you're earning, and you can't afford that. 
and I would genuinely pull them in and speak to them about it and say, this is the reality, you need to, but my agents told me this, so my agents told me I can afford this. And, right. And it's just... Look it's like it. a player rather than being a player, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, absolutely. I think that's the way the whole world has gone. It's almost like, how do you look rather than how do you act or how, how are you? I mean, and maybe maybe that was the start. Maybe that was the prelude of it all, you know, if you if you give off a perception. But it doesn't work like that in football. I mean, it does today because, because today I think you can get by without doing all the aspects of what the game used to be. Yeah. You know, you don't you don't have to be as strong anymore. You don't have to be the greatest passer anymore to have great stats as a passer. You know yeah, what I mean? But, so but, it's but, but, but I genuinely had good players that yeah. could have played higher, but because yeah. they didn't want it as much as we did as kids. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. they would come in and I would say, look, my door's always open. They'd come in and speak to me one on one, and they, they would tell me all their problems, or they would tell me what they wanted to do and how they wanted to change us. As soon as they walked out my door and shut the door, I was just thinking, you're just, you're fucking bullshit. Yeah. You're not going to change anything. You're coming to see me, Sam, your manager, for a show. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, how many times did you knock in the manager's door? Um, only when I wanted to go to Dublin for the Christmas party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, <laughs> yeah. Or, when, or when you knew you were in trouble. Yeah. Or, or if you'd been left out. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, if I've been left taken out. off on the Saturday yeah. and going to see them the Monday morning and ask them why. Yeah, definitely. I used yeah. to get, honestly, it used to be <laughs> as soon as training was finished. The was, that was that sound effects? Was that sound effects? Yeah, I was just knocking. I was just knocking my head. <laughs> was that was that Sam on the window saying if you want more wine? <laughs> no, that was me knocking the window to get more wine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it, 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 it's hard for me. Can't you just flag. go in the cat flap like you'd always do? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it, it's hard for me to slag to slag the players off I manage because I genuinely a lot of them gave me what they had. But did you? So can I ask you something? Good. Can I ask you something? Did you instill the psychology classes that we did with Willie Dorricky? What? Feel your feet <laughs> on the floor. Set up straight like a man. <laughs> What about the what about the trigger? Feel your bottom on the feet. <laughs> feel, feel your bottom. Get your body erect. <laughs> that was the best. I think, I think my dad took these classes too seriously. Oh, honestly, boys, it was. Did you know Willie and your dad? Willie was somebody who would do. Even if he liked a player or didn't like a player. And that tried to take this into what I did as a manager. Yeah. He would try and help them, wouldn't he? He's brilliant, mate. He's but, brilliant. He was and he so was ahead of his time. He was very much so. So out the box uh, and oh, off his oh. box sometimes. Um, <laughs> but do you remember the, the time? Medi- the remember meditation the, sessions. We the meditation have. sessions. Yeah. Oh, boys, like it was having... like somebody would fart. It'd be, be like being in a classroom, you know, and the teacher's telling you all to be quiet. Yeah. And it's a teacher you're scared of. And then someone would fart, and we're grown men, and it just we'd look around at each other, and then his, his shoulders would go, yeah. and then before you know it, the grunting, the grunting would start, <laughs> and then someone would just completely snot out the nose because they couldn't hold the laughter anymore. You forget that we'd all be sitting there and trying to do what we would want to do, and let feel your feet on the floor, <laughs> and then somebody would go. <laughs> I feel like <laughs> the whole room would erupt, wouldn't it? Do you remember when he went? Uh, I mean, it was, and believe me, it was it was deadly serious when we were doing it. Do you remember? I think we'd lost at Liverpool at Anfield. I think Georgie Ray was playing, and I think we'd we'd concede, we'd scored, and then conceded straight away. Mm-hmm. And he's and Billy was uh, uh, Willie was all about psychology. He said what we need. It's like people switch off. When you score a goal, that's when you're at your most vulnerable. That couple of minutes, that minute after, that's when you're true, team yeah. kick off, you've lost yourself in, in the celebrations. He said, what we need is we need something. If we do score, this is what he's saying, after it had happened at Anfield, he said, like, if we score, we need, we need a word or, or a spark, yeah. you know, something. Somebody say something to get everybody concentrating again. You know, to set us once we set up for the for the kickoff again, somebody say something. 
like a like a spark, like a trigger. And I put my hand up and he went, oh, because he used to hate me speaking. <laughs> he went, what, bitch? I went, all right, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and then it took a while like that. He said, when he said like a trigger, I thought trigger. <laughs> I was, Did anyone went, else actually? And then, yeah, yeah, it took a while like Dickie just then Somebody chuckled. And then somebody else chuckled, and then somebody else laughed, and it just went from there. It was like being in a school class, and always you didn't want really to laugh. It you was sent yeah. to the corner with your yeah, that nervous laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, but no. Well, well, he was amazing. Wasn't he? he was. He was brilliant, mate. And he used to look at me that way as well. He he knew that I was old school, and wasn't sort of fully on board with the new ways, and just sort of let me go a little bit. Because the psychologist, I remember he, he brought the psychologist in. Yeah. And, and we'd have the meetings with the psychologist and he'd go, has anyone got any questions except you? And point at me. <laughs> because I would question what he was doing. Because what I thought he was doing wasn't relevant to football. Because he'd never been a footballer. He's trying to bring uh, a, a room environment onto a pitch. And I never got that. I understood what he was trying to say. But I had to try and put the point across of how do you know what it's like to be us out on the pitch? And I think that's reasonable, to be fair. But it got to the stage where if we were walking along the corridor and sort of seeing each other, walking towards each other, he'd dive into the first room. <laughs> to get away from just, so, just so I didn't ask him anything. Strange. But, but, but I was like that as well. I was like, but I never, I, I didn't need a psychologist to get me to do what I wanted to do but thinking back now but there were some people in the season <laughs> that did weren't there yeah they did yeah and, and, and it's back, look it's and go, I had to I, I couldn't when I was at Oldham as manager but at Doncaster I had to try and get one in because some of this, the issues that the players were coming to me with I, I couldn't deal with myself I couldn't answer the questions to them do you know what I mean so they needed somebody else but what I did do when I brought the psychologist in I sat the lads down and I said, look, I'm not bringing them in to say that every single one of you have to go and see them, because that's not fair. Yeah. If you want to go and see them, I don't want to know about it. If you don't want to go and see them, <clears throat> don't want to know about it. But it's down to you. There's no pressure. I know there's, there's clubs where everybody has to go and see one. Now, do you know what I mean? Which I think yeah. affects their mentality anyway. Definitely, mate, yeah. All right, fellas. Well, listen, let's get to this stage. Mate, I, ca I can't believe it. We've probably done about two hours by now. And, and we only Close. probably do, do an hour. I think we're halfway through. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I honestly, uh, I wanted to ask Paul if there's anything you can uh, embarrass my dad about because on yeah, this show... we'll get to that. Up, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> Why do you want to jump ahead to that? We're there's so many that. hours well, in is, a day. This is the only reason we do this. Yeah. <laughs> What you've got to realise is, as many stories as he has on me, I have on him. All right, but well, but uh, <laughs> we can we can edit your nah. stories out. So. Nah, what it is? Nah, what it Thank is? You, Look, every, <laughs> <laughs> every yeah. guest we have, right? Which you're the first, and I'm very proud that you've. Came so on, so every uh, guest we have, <laughs> but you're the uh, first. Is allowed is allowed to put me in the. You in you have to, to embarrass. Him, I think uh, I think yeah. the segment Stitch Up Bish is a good Stitch Up Bish. We're going to call it Stitch Up Bish. Stitch, so yeah. the boys have got yeah. four four Can questions. We have a separate show for this. What? <laughs> Can we have a separate show? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, no, no, we'll no, just no, me no. and you. We'll call, we'll call you after this, and you don't you don't have to censor anything. You know. All right, chaps. Well, look. <laughs> you can get to the question: Is what was I like as number one? Well, just to note as well, he wrote these questions. So as as far as you <laughs> yeah. wanna as far as you wanna trail from these questions, we're happy to go. Hey, listen. Uh, listen, hey. I want I want this podcast <laughs> to take off as well, you know. So yeah. I'm willing to put my neck on the line. Well for, <laughs> All right. So, yeah. <laughs> so, That's a uh, story. Go on. <laughs> so so Paul no, Dick, Go on then. Go on then carry on without me. Not neck and teddy bears, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Black cats. We can't go into that one. Next question. Black cats. That, that might Black be cats. that might be a different story. I don't know, but um, I mean the first. I'm, I'm, I'm... First of all, all right, all right let's just. Right. Dad's gonna get arrested by the sixth episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
We're going to have... We're gonna have FBI agents show up at the apartment this and be like, what did, he, "What did he do?" Of what he did, yeah. So anyway, so oh, sti- stitch up, bish. Social what? social distancing, mate. They can't come and get me. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> you're safe. So what? Oh, nah. So Paul, what was what was Ian like? As we'll start this off was with what was he like as a roommate? And feel free Crack. to be as explicit as, explicit <laughs> as possible. Crackers. <laughs> Absolute crackers. Um, where do you want me to start in this one? I think probably the best Anywhere. one is Lanzarote, bitch. Lanzarote, yeah, that was yeah. Go on. Yeah, so Joe's took us to Lanzarote in a mid-season break, and and basically told us that we weren't allowed to drink before seven o'clock. <clears throat> and um, and our first drink, he would buy it for us yeah, at, at the bar. O'clock. At the bar, yeah, at seven, yeah. But anyway, we went out one night and got back in about four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and our little apartment. Not we'll start off as as soon as we get into the apartment, sorry. It was a two bed apartment, but with one bed. <laughs> so Bish being the senior pro, he's in there first. Bang. Oh the one bed. who fitted in the bed, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> but, but the, the other bed was one of these. Uh, I'm, I'm actually doing the actions while I'm talking to you. <laughs> but, 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 but one of these, but one of these pull down ones from the wall. Do you know what I mean? You know, like in a you know, like a single studio where the bed integrates into the wall, and you have to pull it out from the wall. You pull it out from the wall, then it comes down, then it's a bed. Now you, they're too young for this bitch. Too young. Go on. They've never, so, they've never seen, they've never been that underprivileged. No, exactly. So anyway, I, I'm in this one in the world. So we'll get back in at four o'clock in the morning. We're training. I think Willie had us up on the beach at eight o'clock, didn't he? Yeah, for the psychology session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With a rod through your back to your feet and get your body. <laughs> 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 so so anyway, we'll get into the apartment. All fine. Pissy farts. I pulled my bed down, got in bed. Notice, notice, pissed as farts is fine. Yeah, we were all fine. We checked each other. We were all pissed as farts. That was fine. <laughs> uh, but, but outside our room there was a pool. Um, so I, I know what this is like. So I'm, I've got, I've got the key to the door that goes out to the pool, and I've hid it. So I'm just lying in bed going to sleep. <laughs> I just came over to him and went, "I'm going for a swim," and I went, "No, you're not." I went, the gaffers told us. I went, the place is full of families and everything else. You jump into the main pool, you're going to wake everybody up. It's like four o'clock, quarter past four in the morning. I'm trying to be sensible, I was. And he's went, give me the key. And I went, I'm not giving you the key <laughs> to get back out. And he's went, give me the key. And I went, no. And he went, you can bleep this out. And he's went, give me the fucking key. <laughs> and I went, no. <laughs> But what he's done is, as I've said no again, he's released the bed <laughs> and flicked it back up. So before I know it, I'm upside down, <laughs> back to the wall, stuck in the bed. He's inside the wall. <laughs> I'm inside the wall and can't move. And all I can hear is, give me the key. And he must have left me there. He must have left me there for about 40 minutes, mate. Yeah. To the point. To the point all the blood, all the blood, all the blood rushed to your head. Yeah, yeah. my head was bigger than my body by the time we finished. <laughs> and it wasn't a big head. <laughs> it was a massive heat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, you didn't go for a swim. But then the next morning we've got up, and I, 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 I was I was quite good at getting up. And then I was like, "Bish, come on, we need to go for breakfast." And you're like, "No, no, just give me another five minutes." Another five minutes. I haven't done for breakfast. We were actually training on the beach. We're all on the beach. Willie's there, ready to take a session, and he's like, "Where's Bish?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thinking, "Yeah, he's just coming now." Willie's looking at me. You have to say he's not coming for training, is he? And then, <laughs> and then Bish, her father, proceeds to turn up the training session. With the slippers in the hotel room, and dressing gown, <laughs> and sunglasses on at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> and proceeded to do the whole training session with his sunglasses on, his dressing gown, and his slippers on, and 
the lads were <laughs> wetting themselves. So anyway, we finished training. I don't know if you remember, Bish, it was Jerry Deacon's birthday. Yeah, I remember, son. And there was me, you, Mark Kennedy, Jeff Whitley, <laughs> and who else? And big Tommy, right? Tommy, yeah. Big Tommy, yeah. And we went, look, Gerard, it's your birthday, we'll go for lunch. And Gerard was from Holland, he was like, he was one of the boys, wasn't he? But he was... Yeah, he was, he was saying that. He, yeah. he was always there, but, but yeah. never in trouble. And, and Gerard was like, oh, but the gaffer has told us that we cannot go out to drink. And I said, no. We'll just we can't have a drink till seven o'clock. Yeah. So this was about one o'clock, wasn't it? Two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> and Gerard's like, oh, like, Gerard, just a bit of lunch, you don't have to drink. So anyway, Gerard didn't drink. Me, you, Jeff. Sparking, so so, <laughs> and then it got to about half six and we're like shit we better get back to the hotel now the gaffer's got <clears throat> drinks at seven so Tommy Wright <laughs> proceeded to buy five sombreros on the way back five cigars ponchos <laughs> ponchos sombreros and cigars yeah. <laughs> we all turned up at the bar <laughs> where Joe and the rest of the lads were <laughs> Like five Mexicans. <laughs> Cigars hanging out his mouth, pissed as farts. And I always remember Joe going, I'm really glad you've adhered to the rules, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I remember standing next to him at the bar, just siding in. And he went, what do you want, bitch? He never even commented on the cigar, no, the sombrero, he he the poncho. Anything, he? He, no, just left he, went, he went, what do you want, bitch? I went, I'll have a lager, Joe. He went, it's not your first of the day, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Five little Mexicans came in. Well, four tall ones and a little one. And a regular one. Four and a half came in. <laughs> it was and brilliant. Then, but then the next day, um, obviously we weren't allowed to drink to seven o'clock. Somebody went to the supermarket. Uh, well, we ran out of beer, didn't we? That was the day before we left. <laughs> Yeah, we we ran out of beer. <clears throat> we were in Chappie's room because we knew there was some beers in there. And the whole squad was in the room, was in Les Chapman's room. He was the kit man. He's one of the funniest men you'll ever meet in your life. And he was doing his impressions. And we ran out of beer really quickly. And Joe had said, you're not drinking today, the last day. We've we're, we're got to catch a flight, and a bus and a flight. So we went, OK. So anyway, we're all in Chappie's room. We've demolished the last of the beers. And it was like a complex where there was a supermarket, but it was like 200 yards away, like a long corridor where you walk through from the swimming pool under like archways into the supermarket. Bit. And, and I went, oh, you know what, lads, I'll go and get it. So I took, I think it was Jamie Pollock I took with me, Dick here. Uh, it was. But, but, see, I don't know if you remember, I had it by then. Yeah. It was, it, was, it was my Lauren's second birthday. Yeah. Third birthday. you done one, yeah? Yeah. But what has happened was, I, we went in the supermarket and I got a shopping trolley and I, I had, um, it was like four trays of lager, two bottles of whiskey, brandy, vodka and gin. Aftershock. Aftershock. <laughs> uh, I've got it all in this shopping trolley and I'm coming out of the supermarket part and I'm walking down this long sort of aisle that leads out onto the swimming pool where the rooms were. And it's literally 80 to 100 yards long. And as I turned the corner with the shopping trolley, I've got Jamie Pollock walking behind me. It was like a, it was like a like a cowboy scene from a cowboy film. <laughs> <laughs> Up the other end, Joel Royal, Ace, Willie Donachy, and uh, I think it was Roy. Was it Roy or Ronnie? Roy, Roy Bailey. Roy Bailey, the physio. The four of them turned the corner at the same time. Was just facing me. Now I've got to walk 100 yards towards them. With this shopping trolley, we're not allowed to drink. I've got four cases of beer, two bottles of every alcohol I could find. I just had to carry on walking with my head down. And I got up to them. They'd stopped and let me get all the way. And as I got up, I could see the feet, like, you know. I just lifted my head and Joe went, you never did have the best time in Bish, did you? <laughs> <laughs> he went, and to be fair, he went, go on then, I haven't seen you. Let me go. Took the shopping cart with the beers back to the room. The, the first day back training, I don't know if you remember, um, and Joe went to me and he went, did you hear about your mate, your roommate? And I went, yes, I have, Gaffer. And he went, I'm never letting you leave again. <laughs> <laughs> I went, 
And he went, on second thoughts, he said, if you had been there, it would have been worse. <laughs> I remember him saying to me, we were, we were getting on the bus in Lanzarote, he went, is your car at the airport? I went, yeah. He went, I'm driving you home then. I said, Joe, we haven't even got there yet. <laughs> he went, I don't care, you're not driving your car home. Which was fair enough, because most of the time after away trips, I used to drop him off, didn't I? <laughs> no, he did, actually. And I don't know who he was. We just sided on the, on the bus on the uh, on the trips back from the games. It was brilliant. Legend. But yeah, so, so that, that's one story. Mate, we get to look, we're only on question one. We're only on roommate. And okay. we've gone through <laughs> we've gone through trips, uh, uh, it, dressing room, that, on a, a regular night. Said, no, 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 no. I'm not finishing roommates yet. <laughs> oh, okay, go on. <laughs> I want to go back to the Christmas party one. <laughs> you know, it took us two weeks to get you on the show. Now we've got to get you off. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been out in Manchester. <laughs> oh, fuck it. <laughs> Come on, son. Party. And as much as I'm four foot nothing, I, I like to think I can put it away. And and you can as well, Bash, but I've never seen you as drunk that day in my life. Well, I was going to th- this was part of my four questions. I'm going to I'm going to actually bring them in to it now so I can get through it. Right. Right. That was that was the 2000 Christmas party. Yeah. Right. My first question was, who went to hospital? At that Christmas party. <laughs> right. Who went to hospital? Who went to hospital? I know who nearly went to hospital and I, who I took him to hospital and had to take him home. Go on. I'm going about Lauren Charvet here. Lauren Charvet, yeah. Right, yeah. Lauren Charvet. I thought you went to hospital, mate. I thought after he smashed his head on the bar. Oh, but how funny was that? Oh, hilarious. <laughs> And, and my second question was, what drink was it? What drink how, was how it? How funny was that? How funny was it when he smashed his head on the bar? And went out of this, this is exactly the way it went. Yeah. My first question was, who went to hospital at the, after the Christmas? During the Christmas party, I thought. And yeah, my second question was... was early doors. Yeah, it was early doors. What drink put him there? What was the drink that put him there? Do you remember? He downed the bottle. Oh, who wants to be a millionaire? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Yeah. The answer was he. It was Goldschlager. <laughs> a Goldschlager, of course it was. Yeah. yeah. Wait, said, we need to we need to do a Who Wants he, to Be a Millionaire thing, like boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Boom. A B C O D. Yeah. 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 That, that, that was so funny. I remember him because he, he he hadn't drunk for years, had he? No. And he kept he, he kept talking about his upbringing in Marseille and people pulling guns out and everything else, and he had a couple of bottles of Budweiser. And, and but the Christmas party at the time wasn't just the first team player. We used to get all the young lads out as well. I remember, I remember him standing at the bar and getting a bottle of Goldschlager, and we've gone. I bet you don't down it. No, he said. He uh, said I can. He said I can drink a bottle of that down in one. Ew! Yeah. It's just and we went. The worst. Go on then, do it. And he went. Go on then. He got halfway through it, didn't he? Halfway through it. That's still impressive. He put it to his mouth and he started That's going. Impressive. Goog, goog. Good. And I remember, oh. him, I remember him winking at the boys as he's doing it, as if they say, yeah. I can do that. <laughs> As the ambulance came. And, and I, I swear to God, guys, I've never seen anybody just go boom and hit the fucking floor. Smashed his head on the bar, didn't he? Yeah, go, ambulance go, came. Smash. Wanted right. to take him to hospital, but then I had to get reported to the police. So I took yeah. him in a taxi. He was staying at the Four Seasons Hotel at the time. And I took him to the taxi. Good bit of advertising there. He spewed everywhere all over the taxi. Got right, to the that's, hotel. A, that's a bit of a deja vu that you're going to get in a minute. Yes, absolutely. My um, next no. question was, who <laughs> drank the other half? Yeah, but the, uh, any any time you touch Goldschlager, it's it's not. It's a, a bad night. Yeah, yeah. it's a bad yeah. night well, for definitely, a good story. I, I, as I as I found out, I'm giving it's... you the clue there. Who drank the other half? I will get on to that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I took Lauren to, to his room, and his missus was still in the hotel. They, they had a little, they had a six-month-year-old, didn't they, baby? Mm. And I've literally, I've knocked on the door. Wait a minute, a six-month-year-old? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a 
point oh, the smart, point. Come on, son. He had the other five-year-old. He had the other half. Tell me about that. Five wines in. Okay, man. And the rest. Come on, son. A six-month-year-old. Go on. After that. I've just knocked on the door and I've left him with his head against the door. And his message is open. Blood everywhere. Blood everywhere. And I was like, I'm not waiting around. This is only about four o'clock in the afternoon, by the way. <laughs> so I'll get back Them into Christmas town. Christmas parties were brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I hadn't even it. unwrapped the presents. I've just walked into the bar that we were in. Before I know it, big rubber face Tommy Wright is trying to headbutt Ryan Giggs' brother. <laughs> Really? Why? Why? I don't know. Right? Wait, really? Why? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's trying why to I don't know. Ryan Giggs' brother? Rodri, yeah. But the thing is, Tommy was that drunk at the time. <laughs> His head it was still was just... daylight. It was daylight, Rodri. <laughs> it was the slowest <laughs> headbutt I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> right. His headbutt from pulling back to headbutt must have took about 30 seconds. <laughs> so he completely... <laughs> so he, he completely missed him and fell flat in his face. <laughs> Right. Maybe he just couldn't control the balance of his big head. I'm just, I'm right. just picturing the slowest headbutt ever. It's just like the, it was. the perfect it thing. Was. No, no, they were nose to nose to each other, and Tommy pulled his head back, and 30 seconds later, his nose is smashed the floor. <laughs> he's, he's already gone and ordered floor. another pint. <laughs> he's like, so, wait, wait right there. And then he starts yeah. pulling his head back to headbutt. <laughs> <laughs> you wait there. Yeah, in a minute. I'll, I'll headbutt you in. 55 minutes and then shouts up around. It was. So, bear in mind, Tommy's six foot five and about 17 stone. Me and you are trying to pick him up, which didn't help because your dad was bladdered by this time as well. I did drink the other half. I drank the other half of the gold schlager, that's why. That was the the trivia question. Yeah, that was part of We've gone away from that, but forget it. So, me being a good lad. I've took Tommy home to his wife Annie. Chucked him and came back. The time he came back, the lad. His wife's what? A N N N I. Oh, okay. Annie. His wife Annie. <laughs> I like I like how, I like how you spelled it out. <laughs> Come on, then. Come on then. No, we're clear. We're clear. Yeah. Tommy's not listening. He my head put me. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah, but it'll, it'll hit you yeah. three years. <laughs> Which I'll never forget as well. Because <laughs> I knocked on the door and Annie's answered. And Annie was brilliant, best, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. She yeah. was, she love was amazing. The, the I love Fanny. And, and Tommy's, Tommy's covered his head and went, don't hit me. Like that. And he's standing there and she just booted him in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> she had really long legs and it was really slow. She pulled the leg back, it took no, forever. No, 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 it wasn't. It wasn't. She rattled him straight away. So anyway, I came back into town and somebody's went, Bishes went to bed. And by this time, it must have been about half seven. And I'm like, what? Bishes went to bed? No way. So I went into the went into the room and there's literally sick everywhere. <laughs> Somebody broke in and was sick everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> there might be Lauren Shaw, they <laughs> Bish was in bed going, I'm sorry. <laughs> like a little kid, right? <laughs> like hey, skipping you know school. I don't, you know what? If I, I didn't, knew you were gonna say that to. you wouldn't I wouldn't have you on my show. <laughs> right. I've walked into the bathroom. <laughs> it is literally sick everywhere. So, <laughs> me, me being a good lad, I just should have left them. Tidy the sick up, towels, and the, oh, oh, God, I'm even now <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> I went back in, I'm like, Bish, you all right? You all right? And nothing. I, th- I, actually thought I was, he was dead. dead. I was dead. I was I dead. I actually thought he was dead. I was dead. But, but, but once I thought he was dead, I thought, right, I'm going out now to enjoy myself. <laughs> yeah. but to celebrate my death. Right, he's out the way. <laughs> you went out to celebrate my death. <laughs> yes, <I did. laughs> so I went, I went back out thinking he's he's not getting up till at least four o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Went back out for a couple of hours and thought, oh, he's not. Obviously, I didn't check my phone because uh, I knew Jan would be after me. <laughs> and I went back to the hotel room just checking him. There's nobody there. 
And then I checked my phone. And I've had all these missed calls. He's back out dancing again. I have never seen. And it's, it's very fitting that this is Easter weekend because it's the best <laughs> resurrection I have seen so few. Yeah. I swear, I can't explain to you. Three days later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he rose you again. Know yeah, yeah. You know what happened in truth? You nail him to the After. cross. He will be out again <laughs> yeah. three days later. You know what happened? After the, the end of the night, at the very end of the night, I've come back to my hotel, right? Bish has died, Bish has gone, Bish will rise yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> they, they rolled a stone over his hotel yeah, room. Yeah, you had the last supper up. where you had uh, bread and wine. Uh... Can you imagine I must have stumbled in or got carried in and then people at reception have seen me and then I've sort of rose from the dead <laughs> Try to ring him thinking, where am I? Why is it sort of still light and I'm in bed? And then I've, I've managed to go out and meet up with the boys again. We've had to finish the night. And then I've got back to my room. Like, I don't know whether it was two in the morning, three in the morning. I've gone into my room thinking it was the first time I'd gone into my room. <laughs> you couldn't even remember so, being in there. <laughs> so my bed's, my, bed's all, <laughs> my bed's all ruffled. The windows open. Obviously, I'd done that for the fresh air, but I don't remember. Whoa, 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 oh, you whoa, 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 went whoa, whoa. out. I had, I had done that for the fresh air. Oh, you done yeah. that. You done yeah. that for the smell of sick. <laughs> I didn't know that. So what I've done, I phoned down and I've accused reception. I went, somebody has broken into my room, <laughs> slept in my bed, slept in my bed, and climbed out the window. And had a great fucking time. <laughs> I was on the second floor, so somebody was, climbed out no, the window. So they've actually in, brought... Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I was in my taxi on the way home at four o'clock, three o'clock in the morning, and you called me and went, somebody's been in my fucking room. <laughs> I went, yes, it was you. <laughs> it was you before you. You were in the room, yeah. I didn't know that, though. So I've got security, and the, the manager had to come into my room. They got me new sheets, made a new bed, and I'm telling the story. Somebody's come in through the window, slept in my you... bed, and so, like Goldilocks. And you got them drunk. You, you, off. you always were one to blame somebody else, though, right? Yeah, I was, Cause, blaming, cause I was I have, blaming the three bears. I have a, I have a good story. I, oh, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know if we're going <laughs> to continue with this or cut it out, but I got blamed when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> On Should the we go there? Yeah, yeah, we'll go yeah, there. I just said it. We'll let you tell the story. All right. After the night out, <laughs> I ran to the toilet naked from the bedroom and thought I was going to throw up. And lo and behold, got a little surprise <laughs> from the other end. <laughs> the problem, the problem was easily done. The bathroom, the bathroom was carpet, so that's the problem. Yeah, yeah no, that's no, that's easy. the problem. That's the problem. That's the problem. So, so I just carpet you. in my bathroom. <laughs> Simple, simple, <laughs> like anybody else would do. <laughs> Absolutely. The only reason why I, I'll have, ever have a kid <laughs> is going out drinking and just blaming it all on him. <laughs> you know, sometimes when the simplest things are the funniest things, I don't know if you remember this, but one of the things I, I, still laugh, I still laugh about now about your dad, we played Charlton away. And we came, right. down, for a pre we came down for a pre-match meal. And, um, you, you know... Oh, 99% of people that work in hotels are foreigners and you went to the guy you went um, <laughs> well, where's a pre-match meal and the guys went oh it's, it's in the terrace around the corner <laughs> and you just very quickly went don't you fucking tell me to turn arse around that corner <laughs> 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 and I, I just you know the stupidest little things and that, that, that's what your dad was brilliant at he was so quick Imagine you don't you don't you tell me to tear that around the corner. <laughs> Ticky, do you remember when the, the the crime scene? Somebody's murdered. Which one? Murdered Dicky on his bike. <laughs> the little cycle, the little cycling lanes, you know, where there's a little man on a bike. Yeah, yeah. But it's painted in white like the FBI. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But he'd come out and there was one of them outside the hotel about, oh, somebody's murdered Dickie while he was riding his bike. <laughs> it was funnier being there, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, hey, I'm funny. sure. Yeah, it was funny at the time. Yeah, sure it was much yeah, funnier. I was the butt of all small jokes. 
<laughs> See, Paul. Hey, listen. Going back, going back to the roommate thing. Do you know one of the reasons why we were roommates? Go on. Well, I didn't mind your little habit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean you. I don't mean you drinking. What? What you said afterwards? You didn't mind your huge habit. <laughs> is what is going on? He'd go. He'd go in the bathroom. He'd turn the shower on. on, really hot, right? Steam, steam the room up. I, I wouldn't know what he was doing at first because he never really told me. But I'd end up opening the toilet door, <laughs> <laughs> and all I could see was a little light. Just a tiny little light. It was they, his little. F- is that what they call it? Yeah. <laughs> it I mean, was his little red. It was his little red end. It was, red end. It was <laughs> his little red end. Imagine what it's like being roommates with it you, though. It was a huge light. <laughs> it, was, it was the biggest light. Yeah. It was like if Yoda smoked <laughs> with his lightsaber. It was like Yoda with his lightsaber. Imagine what it's like being roommates with you, though. Yeah, I couldn't imagine what it was like. Being... And I, I'm <laughs> saying that oh, honestly, after guys, being with brilliant. roommates with you. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is this is a good this is a good segue because I mean we've already spoken about. But Paul, what was it like being roommates with yeah. Ian? Wait a minute, wait a minute. A segue isn't that one of them machines that you fucking stand on and it whizzes you all over the place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you mean a segment? Of, Do you mean a one segment? of those things you sh- no no no. Shit. It's also no, a segue. A segue is to. I mean, we've got a shitload of things we could talk about, but like, we've talked I- about a lot. Honestly. Ian, have you have you have you spoken about uh, how many questions for 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 Paul have you have you got Paul, through? I mean, all of them. Well, I, I was only I was only I was only one to ask about that Christmas party. To be fair, because um, it was a an exceptional day. Honestly, we're, um, we're we're still trying to embarrass you. So if there's anything you have, feel free if you think of anything yeah. else. If you think of anything else, we can just we can just yeah. Uh, we've got a we've got this segment stitch up bish. So so Paul. Any more it, about the trips? Any, any more about the trips, Sticky? Any other any other trips? Any other? A lot that we could probably repeat. <laughs> no, you can repeat yep. it all. That's what that's <laughs> no, what we we're can't. here for. No, no, yeah. Uh, no, I think we've done about four hours now. Yeah, yeah honestly. But uh, honestly, boys, to be fair, you have the light and so. On. Hey, don't worry, we've heard, I've heard no. every single story about 50, 50 times since I was the, at the age of six years old. The, the, the best one is, is when they turned up on the Monday after the playoff final. I still say that now. <coughs> yeah, yeah we'll, have, we'll have to tell that story. We'll have to, um, well, you know what, mate, you know what I did? And, and, and it was half family, half, because it was all happening in London. Uh, we never knew what was going to happen in the game, neither. And it was already planned because it was a bank holiday weekend. Are we recording, Jordy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've been recording. It was already. It was <laughs> no. already planned. <laughs> Do you know what this fucking podcast? It's a podcast, Dad. We've we've been recording. Go on, go on. Yeah, don't be funny, fucks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, we are as funny, fucks. Yeah, go on, go on, continue. All right. No, I just didn't know because we'd sort of stopped a little bit. But anyway. I I regret, and I, I see, whichever way I go with this story, if I say I regret not going with the boys, then I, I would have left you you lot, my family, in, in London. Which were the real me. boys. Well, you know what? You you were only babies at the time, to be honest with you. And, I and that. We had, we had many bank holiday weekends. For me, I do have a little regret. I, I don't even know what you did on that. Sunday night, Dickie. I know you had your barbecue on the Monday. Yeah. But I don't know what you did on a Sunday night. If you stayed together, if all the boys went out. I still don't know because I really didn't want to know because I wasn't there. You yeah. know what I mean? I felt guilty not that, being that there. That was your biggest thing, wasn't it? It's was yeah. for more. And not giving me the voice. Yeah, it was, mate. Yeah, you did know, they... I should have been on the bus. I should have been on the bus. Bit the voice. Paul, the I thing is... I remember is... a lot about the bus going back we, we all went over to the Hilton for a couple of drinks I remember being there yeah, yeah. being at the Hilton yeah and, and, and then we all got in the bus and then we went straight back to my mate's pub mm. and this was after the, Alistair, the, was 99, the 99 final right after the 99 yeah, yeah. the playoff final we, yeah we, we went back there um, to Altrium and then obviously everybody cracked on um, to like early hours actually I went all the way through 
So <laughs> he's <laughs> a trooper. He's a trooper. Which wasn't the first time. Somebody's got him. And, and then we knew that we had this barbecue, and, and everybody turned up. I think Kev Kev Orlock was the only one. He went back to somewhere in London as well, didn't he? Kev couldn't make it. Yeah. And no, but had, for, yeah, for me, my my side of it. I mean, look, mate, you you finish off with the, you know, I don't even know how it started. I just know my bit, and my bit is quite a long story, to be fair. So, no, I, I remember speaking to you at eleven, twelve o'clock. Yeah. And 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 basically, you're like, oh, who's all coming? I said, oh, everybody's here. Willie came. Joe didn't. Mm. Joe something on the next day. Chappy, Ronnie. Roy Bailey and literally all the players were there and you were like oh yeah. god I was so gutted and I was still I was like half pissed all at the time anyway because I hadn't been to bed yet and then once everybody comes the barbecue comes on I, I ordered a portable bar from my garage or something like that I think whatever that is and then <laughs> and, and, and then go on you, you tell your bit now then I'll finish well, well yeah. my side of it was and I don't know if Jordy and Connor remember we'd sort of gone out for lunch on a bank holiday afternoon, I, I, I felt lost. I felt I felt hollow sort of thing. One of the biggest days of our life had just happened. And and I knew for a fact everybody was at yours, all the boys were together. I'd missed I'd missed the bus home because I was obviously with my family. And then I remember just thinking, I've got to be there. And I jumped in a taxi and went to Houston, um, the train station, and I, I think it was a two o'clock train. And I just got there bang on two o'clock. I didn't even have time to go and buy a ticket. And I just jumped on the train. I thought, you know what? The conductor will come round and he'll he'll I'll just buy the ticket on the train, you know? But I've gotta be with the lads. I just I've gotta be with the boys, you know. It's just one of them things. And I sat on the train. I remember going, like, f- by the uh, the buffet cart, which was the best place to be. And I'm thinking, I'll just buy a couple of beers, and I'll sit. I sat not on a table. Uh, it was just a seat with no table, like with a pull down little tray. And I just sat me two beers on there. And... <laughs> what was that? So it was just a seat then. <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those. Uh, sort of things you sit on. Those seats. You know, you put your butt on it, but you, you don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I got me two beers. Um, <laughs> That's right. It was one of those things you sit and drink beers. on. I'm sitting on a seat. I'm not sitting on a table. I'm sitting on a seat. So I've got me two beers. And I've got my head down, and I can see people walking by, and, and I can see the, the Man City colours, and I'm thinking, oh, I'll just keep my head down. I'll just have a couple of beers. When I get there, I'll get to the party. Anyway, I don't know how many people went by, but I remember this person stopping and, like, sort of looking. There's a pair of legs next to me, and I thought, I'll look up. Dickie, was his name Was his name Jed? Who was the lad who worked at – he was a groundsman at Platt Lane? Jed. Jed. Was it Jed, yeah? yeah? So I his legs Well, I obviously I was yeah. looking down, mate. I wasn't. Me, head and you're was like, down, those so are a nice pair of legs. legs. I, I, I better just see look feet. Up. And, yeah, well, yeah. Jed was stiletto. He had stilettos on. He had stilettos on. Wikipedia yeah. of Man City yeah. as well. So anyway, so I looked up and and he's gone, Bish, what, what are you doing? There's three carriages full of Man City fans back there. He went, Why don't you come down? I went, Oh, okay, I'll be down in a minute. And then he walked, carried on walking. I thought, ah, oh, okay. So I went to the buffet bar and I bought two trays of lager, which are like 48, two trays of 24. And I started carrying them down the train. And as I'm carrying that down the train, different people in the, uh, the carriages as a walkthrough were sort of recognising me and saying hello and things like that. And you can see the strangers going, who the fuck is he like, you know? I'm walking down with these two trays of beer. And then I opened the first door of the carriage, and I swear it was mayhem. There was they were lying in the the luggage racks. They were mm-hmm. sitting, standing on the tables. It was bouncing. I just walked in. I plonked the two trays of beer down, 
and started singing. I just drank and sang for about three hours, or however long the journey was, to Macclesfield it was. And um, the, I remember the conductor coming in, the, the ticket fella, thinking, I don't even have a ticket, you know, I bumped on the train. And I remember him coming in, and I did intend to pay for my ticket when he came up to me, but he couldn't get through the crowd. And I just, I just remember him giving up and turning around and walking out. And then we just sang for the whole journey. And I remember one of the lads saying, oh, where are you going? I said, I'm going to, Dickie's got a barbecue at his house in Bowden. And I've got to make my way there when I get out. Macclesfield was a little trek away. And he went, oh, my dad's picking me up. We'll give you a lift. I went, really? He went, yeah, yeah, we'll give you a lift. It's not where they lived, but they took me to Dickie's house. I just remember um, he dropped me off outside. And look, if if you ever have a little puppy dog and you come home, and you should mail, know, Jordan. And mail, you seen that? <laughs> you see, no, honestly. You know when you walk in the door and they see you and, and they go mental and then start wagging the tail? I, I was outside his house and I shouted his name. I went, Dickie! <laughs> and he jumped. He literally ran and jumped over his garden fence. Or there was a, probably a ladder the other side of it that I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> or a trampoline. a trampoline. Maybe it was yeah. a trampoline. But he jumped over the fence and pinned me down in the front lawn, <laughs> sitting on top of me, get, hugging it me and kissing me. In the world, wasn't it? It was, it was some day, mate, uh, honestly. And I, I, I managed to get in trouble with your missus, didn't I, with the hot dog oh. sticking out my keks and... <laughs> and, yeah. uh, no surprise. No surprise. Uh, uh, a funny story, uh, was that when he jumped on you? Uh, the, 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 and Chan, absolutely, you know, mate, Chan loves you to bits. But that mm. night, so, 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 <laughs> we just had Sam, I think. Sam was a baby, and, yeah. and, and obviously, I'd, I'd been up for 24 hours. Jan had a bit of an hour sleep with the baby and everything else. <coughs> And she just had a pair of jeans and a crop top on. She had the ripped and jeans it, on and that, you know? Yeah. The ripped jeans and the, and the crop top and that. <laughs> and I always remember. <laughs> you, you know, when people flick coins into tramps. <laughs> but, but we were sitting outside. It must have been daft o'clock in the morning. And they were sitting there in the bank. And you started flicking coins into jams. <laughs> No, no, what a damn, what a damn was. When she came out, when she came out, obviously she just had the baby and she was casual. She had ripped jeans and I went, Dickie, some homeless person's broke into your party. Yeah. And she, she sort of took offence to that. And then a little bit later on, she come out with a cup of coffee and I started putting coins in a cup. No, no, no. But, 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 How long that wasn't the there? tip of it. No, no, the, the, the tip of it was when you gave her a wedgie. <laughs> she bent over to pick him <laughs> Now you just sound like a fucking bully. <laughs> I just enjoy myself. <laughs> and you Why sat, you sat, you sat himself. out there house for months. I remember not seeing you for months. You sat out there <laughs> house for months, <laughs> and then you came for a wedgie. Yeah. Jesus. Well, the way you finish her off. Things happen on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised we're still alive today. Yeah. From we're like, on this afternoon, mate. <laughs> we're like, where's dad? Oh, he's he's outside Dickie's house for three weeks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's been sitting out there for three weeks waiting. He's just waiting. He's waiting for that wedgie. That's it. <laughs> That's all he's waiting for. Yeah, oh it dear! Well, though, what took well though? Because the baby did went to bed, and we ended up drinking all night again. <laughs> <laughs> so. It always, it always, it always finds a, 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 a positive conclusion. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, you know what, fellas? I honestly don't know how we're going to top this one. I, don't I think know. we might as well just pack in now. Yeah, I think this is the best we've had. I don't. I, don't, I mean, packing the whole podcast forever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> agree. I don't think we're ever going to get this again. Uh, agree. Will people listen for three hours? I don't know. I mean, me and me and Jordan are about nine pints in at this point. So how many yeah, how many pints are you guys in, Dicky? Dicky has your wine. Of, I'm six pints of sangria. <laughs> I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the right that's the right answer. <laughs> you know what you know what Dicky did? 
he started getting bouncing on a trampoline to wave to <laughs> Sam to bring him more. And finally, go on, go on. <laughs> finally, I fucking hate you, Ian. <laughs> Do you remember the scrap we had in my back garden? <laughs> <laughs> go on. <laughs> when you wanted to drive home and I wouldn't let you. Ah, oh, don't. Well, that sounds about right. And he was probably next door as well. Why do we have to finish on a me getting? <laughs> Go on. Why? Why would you do that? You little shit. <laughs> Go on. Probably I've beat only the been fuck banned twice. You, right. I've only been banned twice. You couldn't fucking drive for twenty years. What are you going know. on about? That's why I used to drink and drive me home all the time. <laughs> oh, well, at, at least you, you had a are suspended you license. Because the kids know about the snowman. <laughs> Is that um, a different one? Yeah, no. Remember the five hundred pound snowman, and did. that wasn't weight. That wasn't weight. That was cash. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, and that the, the go on. We're, we're finished tra- training, and we went out for a couple of pints as always. But ended up going out till about two o'clock in the morning, and I said to your dad, "Look, you're staying in mine." He's like, "Yeah, yeah, 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 yeah." He got to mine. He's like, "I'm not coming in." Do you remember this, Beth? Yeah, that's because you and your wife were a cult and w- would have <laughs> recruited me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wish you did. We've we, we ended up arguing because he's wanted these car keys. And I said, I'm not going to you fucking car keys. And he went, well, I'm just going to go then. And this went on for ages. And he was like, well, yeah, well, I'm going to go then. And I went, well, fuck off. There were like a couple of fucking... Young kids who were going out with each other. So the, the next thing I know, he's, you know, he's climbing over my gear. <laughs> the side. And we've ended up having a full on scrap in the back garden <laughs> for <laughs> over his car keys. Different, different weight divisions as well. Different I know. <laughs> but I, I won in the end because you didn't get your car keys to drive home. There yep. you go. <laughs> <laughs> there you fucking go. Shambles. That's the, that's the first time you've ever been quiet me in your life. <laughs> I was going to say. Only, the only time. It's the only time. The radio yeah. silence that he just came out with then. Yeah, I'm surprised he succeeded to that. No, he's thinking, oh, that was just that one time out of listen, 16. Listen, I love him. I know he's listening. I love him, and, and I had to let him win once. Hey, Paul, why do you think he bought a pub walking distance from his house? Because he, he, he literally said, Paul... I've still got done for drink driving. You were taking a tour around Birkdale? He, he, he remember when Donny um, left his car outside the Griffin pub? Yeah. <laughs> we, we used to finish training and go to the Griffin. He was brilliant. And, and then leave Kids, the car at the this Griffin. is why I didn't come back straight away. <laughs> yeah. but, but you to leave the car at the Griffin pub, then go to train the next day with the thoughts of picking it up the next day. And then we'll go to the pub the next day and leave the car. And then well, once you once you had your first couple of pints, you thought, oh, I've, I'm too far mm-hmm. in now, I'll leave it yeah. again. I'll leave it again. Dunny's pub, <laughs> the Dunny's pub, Dunny had to get the tree cutters out. It was there for four months. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the branches of the trees had grown all over his car and everything else that was there. <laughs> so every time he went back to get it, he'd just got the piss again to go do it. I remember Joe saying to me, because he lived in, I think he lived in Formby, and because I was in Birkdale, he said, can you go past his house every morning and, <laughs> and wake him up and bring him in? But instead of Joe saying, I want to get rid of him, he found a, a reason for me to bring okay. him in. Because, player as well, by the way. Yeah, Joe seen us as footballers, didn't he? He's, he's seen us as footballers and whatever yeah. our flaws were, away from the game, as long as our football was fine. If you performed from the Saturday, and he was amazing. I still say to this day that he was my best manager, 100%. Yeah. Because he knew how to get the best out of what he had. Well, let's not finish on a serious note, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> well, Mate, the I snowman. Think... Remember the snowman story? Yeah. We're walking in the air. 
Oh, that's uh. You remember I paid five hundred pound for the snowman? Who oh, is? And who you is... brought him home, and we, me and Jordan, ended up I brought wrestling him home, and you and yeah. you and Jordy went WWF on him. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not hey, fucking hey, around. Don't, don't bring anyone home because we're. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna... Don't bring him in here. Yeah, we're gonna take care of him. Yeah. Um. So I right, remember. Well, I let's... remember. Stra- I remember when I was bringing him home. We were in the pub in the afternoon. It was Christmas Eve, and there was a snowman there, and there was a raffle. And it was like twenty pound a ticket. And I, I went to the fellow behind the bar. How much for the snowman? He went, ah, oh, no, it's not for sale. It's a raffle. I went, well, what will the raffle bring? He went, ah, oh, I couldn't say. I went, what if I give you five hundred pound and I take the snowman off? And he went, yeah. well, I said, will that cover the amount of tickets that you sell? He went, yeah, probably. I went, all right, here's five hundred pound. <laughs> and then and me I, and Jordan just beat the fuck out of it. <laughs> well, before that. I'd actually got in the car, I didn't put my own seatbelt on, I put a seatbelt on the snowman. And I thought, if the police stop me, I'm just going to say me. He's, me, he's driving. Heat, heating's broke. My heating's broke in my car. <laughs> and my friend's a little bit cold. <laughs> good job, good and job. I, you had a line for the policemen that were going to stop you on your way home. Yeah. Well, it was an hour and 15 minute drive. I did think at some stage I was going to get stopped. But well, well we're glad the snowman made it and it didn't melt. You barely did. Snowman and- made it. I got in trouble, and then as soon as I brought the five hundred pound snowman in, you started jumping off the couch, landing on him. <laughs> yeah. With your wrestling moves. That's yeah. why. That's why you get. Well, it's a good. It's a good way to end the podcast, right? Yeah. I think that's a good way. Uh Paul, we we're gonna end it with one thing, right? So, can you tell us something that you don't think fans know about you, other than what what's just happened? Other than what we've just divulged in the past yeah. three hours? Yeah. Oh, what what a good question that is, by the way. What do you think? There's something about yourself. Well that done. Though. Nobody else. Nobody just, else would ever. Just know. in case you need it translating. <laughs> Yeah, just in case. Yeah. Well, what do you what do you do? Question, by the way. What do you do in your spare time that you that you? I know you play the cello. Do you? Uh, Do you play the cello? I (laughs) the stand up. No, he doesn't. No, No. he doesn't. No, he doesn't. No, uh, I am head of sport and excellence for a huge charitable trust. Is that a good one? Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful, yeah. Well, well yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, like, that's a lot to... better than playing the cello, yeah. No, we go into state schools and underprivileged schools in Manchester and identify talent that would never, ever get the opportunity. That's beautiful, I mean, yeah. we, we were looking to, to call you out on something bad, but you've you've topped us on... You spoiled on... it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've made yourself what look good. What a little good. shit. You finished as a little <laughs> shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Which I fully <laughs> expected. <laughs> Seriously, guys, it's it's amazing. No, it's yeah, amazing. No, that, that's we're, the we're, best we're, answer you could have given. It's not just in football, but in all sports. And the amount of talented kids that would never, ever get the opportunity to do it, we give them pathways to go and do it. So, that's beautiful. Is that too sensible an answer? Wow, man. 100%. Is there anything? You've, in, you've and, impressed us. Yeah. Yeah, and I hated it to start off with. Because I've been in football for 27 years and I felt like a glorified school teacher. Exactly. And yeah. didn't know what I was doing, but now I love it. These kids are amazing. And they come from absolutely nothing. But they just need a chance and, and we give them the chance to do it. Does that stem from yourself, mate? From, I mean, I know how I grew up. You know, from um, coming from the. I actually got approached by a guy called Andrew Law, who's a big City fan, who right. wanted to set up the trust. But when I left managing Doncaster, and he came to me with, with his idea, that was one school initially within Manchester, and we're now in nine schools, and it's called the Loris Trust. And honestly, guys, it's it, it's amazing, and these kids are super super talented. But for whatever reason, it might be. I don't want to go into whatever reasons. Yeah, yeah, myself. yeah. They, 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 they don't get the opportunities, so we go in there, identify them, and give them the pathways to it into all sports, and it's it's just brilliant. Yeah, good for you, son. Beautiful. Yeah. 
Probably, yeah, uh, yeah the best answer. Yeah. Obviously, obviously you're the, the best answer we've had since you're our first guest. But the, <laughs> probably, the answer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we we were we were expecting something um, a little out there. But that is that is a beautiful answer, and and we really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Is there so, anything happy else? Days, mate. Is there anything so, else you want to say? Um, I mean, I know any 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 message for the fans as we're as we're, we're stuck in this. We're stuck at home. Yeah. Uh, stay safe, stay at home, but enjoy yourselves at the same time. I'm worried about you, Bish. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry, we all are. Don't, I am uh, seriously yeah. worried about you, man. Don't we worry, all his, are. his knees are too bad to leave the apartment. Yeah, so. so don't worry. If anyone came with pitchforks, they would... Like, yeah, he's, he's, his knees are <laughs> too bad. I've got, can't I've go got this big drone that can pick me up by me braces. He'd fly me anywhere. <laughs> yeah, give you a wedgie and then fly <laughs> you over to us. <laughs> If we ever these to these drones will not stop them. That is my <laughs> oh, yeah. There's nothing. Yeah. There's going to get to a point where Havoc's going to break all this. Yeah. Well, Paul, thank you well, so much for coming on, man. We we really appreciate it. It was such a good time. Yeah, lovely talking to you, Paul. Brilliant, guys. And to me, mate, look, it's oh, just wait, like wait, who, who are you? I forgot who you? about it. Who are you? <laughs> wait, yeah. who, who's just, this? <laughs> shut up, will you, you fucking idiots. <laughs> It's just like a regular phone call to me and him, where we I reminisce. Love, yeah. I love you all, but I love you, Mucker. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we love Cheers, you too. Sir. We love you, man. Thanks for, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks again, Mucker. This is Four fuck. hours for fuck's sake. Yeah, fucking hell. Yeah, well, it was a great episode. This is five pints in. We are out.